What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliacs. Friends, today what we're going to be doing is showing you all the, I want to call them little improvements and upgrades I've done on the Shinisaurus Paludarium. One of the things I appreciate so much about the little community we've built here on Reptiliatus is that everyone is so positive and encouraging of one another's questions. Everybody really strives to help improve each other's pet care. For example, when I post videos about my paludarium, I express that I am sort of a novice when it comes to keeping aquariums. That being said, this enclosure has turned out fantastic, but it's through the help that many of you have offered me that I've been able to make small adjustments that made this enclosure that much better. And in today's video, I want to show you a lot of those little adjustments I've made. But first, I want to take a quick moment to thank today's video sponsor. So let's do that now. Today's video is sponsored by Govi. And Govi was gracious enough to send me one of their thermometer hygrometers to accurately measure the temperature and humidity levels in a multitude of different ways. It contains a fast and accurate Swiss made sensor that gives you precise readings on both accounts. What I love about the device is using the Govi Home app, I'm able to not only connect it through Bluetooth, but through Wi-Fi, meaning that I can monitor the settings anywhere in the world. I've also been able to set alerts that'll notify me on my phone for different temperature range extremes. So I'm using the device on my Europlatus Fantasticus enclosures to ensure that my temperatures do not fall below a certain point or go higher than a certain point. Because as you may know, these animals require very specific temperature levels and if they go higher, it could be very dangerous to them. So using my Govi Wi-Fi thermo hygrometer, I'm able to achieve this. It's also pretty cool that I can watch the graphs and historical trends on the app to see how the temperature fluctuates throughout the day. You can set how often the device reads these stats and it'll give you a really accurate reading of how your levels fluctuate throughout a given day.
shy. So it's this particular fact that's led me to believe that she is also expecting. And Dr. Brown will be able to assess this in our next ultrasound, which should happen in the next two weeks or so. Uh, but <laughs> just the complete flip in, in attitude change, how food aggressive and motivated she's become, I think for sure she's just earlier along than my other female. And uh, it's definitely grab it as well. Aren't you? You could grab it too. Oh, and just like that, they vanish. Well friends, the last few weeks I've been implementing your suggestions into action and now I'm super excited to show you what's happened in this paludarium. One of my favorite things about this enclosure is the amount of diversity of life contained in it. You've probably noticed by now that there are some new inhabitants in here. Many of you have been suggesting I get some Galaxy Danios for this enclosure, insisting that they would not only thrive in here, but really suit the environment well. While I'm here to share that I've added approximately 15 to 19 of these small schooling fish, and I couldn't be happier with that decision. They are absolutely beautiful and the way they school with the rest of the fish, never mind each other, is just so entertaining to observe. The next thing I wanted to show you all was that I installed a small submersible filter to the enclosure to create a current pointing back towards the canister filter. I felt that this was one of the most important concerns voiced that I could take action towards fixing as I agreed that I didn't like that there wasn't much water flow on the right side of the enclosure. As you can see, there's a healthy current moving through the tank now and dare I say it appears to even stimulate my fish as they move in and out of it. Many of you also expressed the importance of not using tap water to clean my canister filter foam. This is because it would kill the beneficial bacteria colonized in it. It was suggested that I should use the old aquarium water to rinse the foam inserts, so I wanted to let you all know that that is what I'm now doing, and it's been working great. Alright guys, for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all something more intimate, let's say. How do you respond to taking criticism? Or maybe suggestions that are there to help promote the well-being of your animals. Have you had someone let you know some advice? And on the opposite side, I'd like to ask you how you feel one should go about delivering that constructive criticism. I think this is something that's very important in the hobby. It's great that people want to encourage each other out of love for the animals to do better, but I think it's also very important that we do that in a very specific way. I think it's fair to say that most of us mean well in the way that we go about keeping our pets, so we also don't want to offend others in the way that we convey that advice or message. So for me, I think it's important to assume that someone means the best and convey in a very loving and compassionate manner how you feel a slight change would be beneficial to their animal. I think that the way we convey things is very important. I've seen in many reptile groups where people are very condescending or sarcastic and I don't think that does anything to help the animal or the individual feel encouraged about their pet keeping and I guess motivated to make that set change because it's immediately putting up a wall or barrier and it's also breaking down the establishment of a sense of community. Again, that's something I really appreciate that we have here on Reptiliatus channel, so I thank you so much for your positive energy and for your kind contributions that I see on a daily basis in the comment section. All right guys, as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Friends, what's interesting is that this enclosure has literally become an aquaponic system. The pothos and other plants contribute to the storage of nutrients, and there's really minimal work for me to do. Once in a while, I'll come over with this bucket and start collecting dead leaves so that they don't fall and break down in the water, but otherwise, it's been so easy. I usually just take all the dead leaves and compost them. 
The Pothos really does take a lot of the nutrients out of the tank, so I've been supplementing with Flourish pretty regularly, and I find this makes a big difference for the aquatic plants. I've also started using these Tropica Nutrition Capsules, and I find that they have great results. Essentially all you have to do is nestle them in the base or root ball system of your aquatic plants in the substrate and they slowly release nutrients over time that's usable for them. A bunch of you guys have made remarks about Neptune, my male beta splendens. He's such an awesome fish and he really gets around and has a lot of character to add to this tank. I really love the guy. And I gotta say I'm confident that he's a really happy beta. Most of my fish are honestly pretty spoiled. That's the way I like to keep them. Between various types of high quality pellets, frozen bloodworms, and even live fruit flies to pick off the surface, they eat like royalty. Today I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my newest patron over on the Patreon platform, and that is John. John, thank you so much for choosing to support my channel with your monthly contributions. It means so much to me and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you better on the platform through the different perks that I have set up there. If you're interested in learning about how you can support Reptiliatus channel further for as little as $2 a month, you can check out the link down below in the description to my Patreon page. Thanks so much for your support again. Well friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video and I hope you know that I really appreciate your advice, your constructive criticism and contributions to everything I do on this channel. It's the sense of community that we've built here that really makes this worth doing and really helps create that sense of community that I always chat about. Sure, I feel honored for contributing to it, but you should too. All right friends, can't wait to see you on Friday because let me tell you, we have a really exciting video. I don't do unboxings very regularly, that's your hint. We have some very exciting new arrivals arriving on Friday. Well, they're not arriving on Friday, but the video will be out Friday. Okay guys, awesome. If you want to see more videos pertaining to this enclosure, as well as the awesome inhabitants that live in it, my Shinisaurus, check out the place up above. Take care everybody, have an awesome week.